You want to sit there, please? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, you have to log in. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jaya Gauranitai, 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 Jaya Gauranitai, 
Jaya Gauranita, 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 Jaya Gauranita. Jaya Tulsi Maharani, Jaya Binda Devi, Jaya Tulsi Maharani, Jaya Binda Jaya Jaya Prabhupada, Prabhupada, Gaur Pramanande Hari Hari Bo Sila Prabhupada Ki Jai Ananta Guri Vaishnava Brinda Ki Jai Sila Rupa Gosai Pat Ki Jai Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu Granta Ki Jai Samaveda Vaishnava Brinda Ki Jai Gaur Pramanande Hari Hari all glories to the assembled devotees are a Krishna. All glories to the assembled devotees are a Krishna. All glories to the assembled devotees are a Krishna. All glories to Sri Sikuru and Goranga. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutale Simati Bhaktivedanta Sami Kinam. Stesha Siddhiva Chani. Nirvishesha Shunavadi Paschata Deshatai. Panchakal Bhutari Vishnu Pasana Chibati Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Binda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama So dear devotees welcome to this section of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, the nectar of the devotion. And you are going to express the gratitude, Mother Kaili. Whoever is singing is naturally. You want Krishna to do it for you? Um, yeah, I think most people have felt that it's very difficult to express that to so just so surely, but um, I guess I'll start with expressing gratitude for Amrita because physically, spiritually, I would not be here for, for Tamataji. She brought me into the Krishna consciousness movement and she also invited me to the land, so this would be possible without her. Um, and then I wanted to extend that also to you know, the temple president, I don't know what to do. Um, so I and Bhakti Chair is one of the and this is a very special place. So feeling that way. It's such a blessing to have this experience and just kind of baffled every day that it's to come here and just be very simple. We don't have to worry about anything, food, like not like nothing. We don't have to worry about where we're gonna sleep at night. And we get to learn about God and um in very loving association. So I'm also grateful for everyone here. Everyone's been really amazing and been inspired by so many of the here especially Amya Mataji is very inspiring. It's a lot of Nanda extending his wisdom and knowledge to all of us. And Anna, for her love and affection, I mean, I can say things about everyone. Uh, but to partner is Muhammad. So, so, yeah, it's just a really sweet group. This is such a blessing to be here. And I pray that it continues so more people can have similar experiences. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. So why it is difficult to 
express gratitude. Because our body, mind, especially this body, it's geared just to survive. Honestly, if you really think very deeply, you just don't feel like fired up to express gratitude. Because gratitude means what you have got affected in your consciousness by well-wisher, benefactor, those who really cares for your spiritual life, how they affected your life. I mean, you have to think and then you think, but the, to express this is like a, how do I do it so quick? Yeah, I can understand that because, but because the body, but when body demands, you just lie down. Okay, rest. You ask for it, I give you rest. Body is hungry, you look for food. So bodily survival um, situation we are in. We need to be alert. That's all. To the thing that more we express gratitude, more actually we are uplifting our consciousness. Material greed is bad, but spiritual greed is most wanted thing. So more we express gratitude, actually we will see our heart gets uplifted and we will actually progress very quick. Now, today's chapter is offense, and we are waiting for Mahatma Prabhu to give us illumination. But I would like to talk to a few minutes about what is offense. I already uh, talked, I, maybe I did or maybe I did not, I'm not sure. But nevertheless, what is offense, if you really think very deeply, what is offense? Can you take the microphone? I want to just see the floor, temperature. No, no. You can start from you and then goes to her, goes to him. You heard the, this is an English word. It's not a Sanskrit word. Aparad is Sanskrit word. Apa means, okay, I'm not speaking. Go ahead. Whatever you understand. Um, it's offense is something that to me is like, I think Negative, that negatively impacts another person. So. You have to take the microphone to each person. They are going to say what is offense means. This is your main service now. Offense. To her. No, one by one. Her, she didn't say. Offense. You have to stand there till she finishes, then you have to go next. Thank you. I guess uh, criticizing or judging another. What's wrong with that? Well, I mean, it creates, uh, in, in a sense, like another negative effect, right? It can make someone feel subconscious, like they're not safe around you. Um, they feel unwelcome in that space or among those people, especially as the boys that are associated with it. So we don't want to, we want to talk to them to go that way. And whatever we send to others, we reinforce with ourselves too. So we're just able to say it makes it harder to be in the emotional mindset and thoughts and acceptance. Okay. Very good. Thank you. 
How is it relevant to uh, our spiritual life? What you said is very good in general uh, about danger of offense or why it is bad. But how it's affecting to our spiritual life or how does it relevant? I think it is <laughs> if you're dealing with devotees, even people in general, and you give a bad impression because you're, for the boys, you're distracting them from their service because now they're having negative thoughts about it. When you're dealing with regular people in general, how they have negative thoughts about the boys in general. And Prabhupada said you have to be a perfect gentleman. And that takes being sensitive to other people. So making offenses by making people just like you. So that was like very nice thank you uh, i hope you all notice he said something uh, that when reporter asked Prabhupada how do we recognize your followers the body in Gainesville. And Prabhupada could have said they have a tilak, neck beats. I mean, he could have said many things. Or they chant Hare Krishna or something. But he said they are perfect gentlemen. And you wonder why Prabhupada would say his followers are perfect gentlemen. Because ultimately boils down to our devotional transformation is what? Reformation, our character, our attitude. That's the whole process. What do we do morning till evening is just trying to purify. What is the purification? Becoming who we are in true sense as a lover of Krishna, servant of Krishna. So this is a perfect gentleman is perfect. Means a good behavior, good attitude, character. Yes, Robert gave such a good answer. But a lot of devotees like, Perfect gentleman? What does that mean? Means somebody could be well dressed, but could be a horrible mentality. So it's very, very wonderful the way Prabhupada said it. Yes, Prabhu. Next. Whoever you like. All right. Um, it's like someone should say, as I would say, to offend someone, to make someone feel some way you wouldn't like to feel personally. That's good. That's very good. Good thought. Thank you. Thank you, Logan. And the temple president of this place. Yes, thank you. <laughs> it is written uh, answer could be directions. It's because it's Something like that is pick somebody. Give some reference also. It's not only for telling or talking, but for sorry, telling truth. So that it is. Uh, Take a very good. Thank you. That's a very nice key point. We should remember that. Yes. So uh, I've been listening to all these uh, responses, like, uh, and while I agree with all with all of them, I feel like they're missing one key point: is that an offense is when you disrespect uh, uh, someone or something because like um if uh you're like going to do something like Vaishnava Brahma uh yeah offending a different another devotee 
the nine times out of ten, the other devotee is not going to take offense because they're pure and they won't, uh, they won't, they don't care about these kind of things. But it still counts as an offense because you disrespected that devotee. Same thing, Namrat. Like you can't exactly make uh, the holy name feel uncomfortable. Like, yeah, it's Krishna. That he won't feel uncomfortable like that. But then if you disrespect the holy name, that's Namrat. So I feel like an offense is disrespecting someone or something. That's a very, very, very uh, wonderful point you made. Because most of the time, these people, they don't take offense, even though technically committed some offense. Yeah. In Haridastra, well, I will talk later. <laughs> you, you are right. What you said is very well. There's a verse actually, you just translated in a simple English of that verse. Oh. Yeah. Nice. So I can tell you, it says, it says Agados, uh, Krishna Sabhav Agados Kamakare. Krishna Sabhav, the nature of Krishna. This is in Madhulila. Chaitanya Chaitanya Krishna Sabhav, the nature of Krishna, Agados, seeing the, sorry, I'm, I'm twisting it. Bhakta Sabhav, Agados, Kamakare, Krishna Sabhav, Bhakta Ninda Sohite Napare. So this is regarding Haridas Thakur with Gopal Chakravarti, who was challenging to cut off Haridas Thakur's nose. And there it says that nature of devotee to forgive others because they are innocent. Consciously, when somebody is very alert in spiritual progress, they will never commit offense. So knowing that these people are ignorant, they forgive. But nature of Krishna, he doesn't forgive. He wants that soul to go through some suffering in order to learn a lesson, to come back. Otherwise, this remains a contamination. Like if you have a germ in the body, you can just say, oh, okay, I don't care. No, no, this germ, you have to let it out. Otherwise, you will get affected. So like that. Very nice. Thank you. Yes, bro. Actually, everybody wants to talk about this. Yes. And this offense is a... Yeah. Um, offense is the one who doesn't get you um, saying that especially on the spiritual side, you came to the body and you know, of course, the Krishna consciousness. Uh, that is the main part of what I talk about. That means what uh, said that is actually right. I everybody is right. Many people don't. Very good. Thank you. Mother Prabhuji. Yes, you go after. Yes, you go after. <laughs> yes, you see after. What is it? Okay. <laughs> Come on. Go ahead, Mother. What's an offense? It means offense. Acting without fence oneself, uh, hurting other person without any weapon. Hurting other person without any weapon. Weapon. I think cars hurts more than knife. Can no, even bad word. That's good, interesting. Yeah, if we just kind of look into it, Abha is by itself is like staying away. And Ra, as far as I know, it's like a popularity. So, which means sure, or kind of finding fault in others, fault finding. So, Abha is always something that we. Conscious. Oh, I know that I make a mistake and it's still coming. Right. So that's where that we lose our maturity. That's what the Abba and Ra mean, that maturity is gone away. Right? Um, yeah, but otherwise, if we don't do it with consciousness, it happens. It's, it's, um, 
it's just I, I don't think that's an expensive. Um, but we can ask for the work that's unconscious. So there I heard Upper Radha, upper gata, upper gata, went away. Upper means the lower, going away. Radha, yes, the service. And uh, I myself figure so much that you know I have offended and situation. But I was so lucky that I was just sex. And so this exercise by a great devotee is a place raising in this banks. So Abrad, if you all have mind, if you all know what is Abrad, not coming in here, Abrad knowing. And knowing me, being a bit. Lord Krishna is always merciful and also trying to reform us. So, from this day, you said that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we got everyone. From the Zoom, would anyone like to give their opinion about Aparad? What is Aparad? Mother Krishna Manju Devi. As a spiritual um, side, it is like uh, if you uh, do some do any activities or anything according to Vedic Shastra, if you maintain that rules and regulation, that is dharma and uh, against um, of uh, Vedic Shastra, that is adharma. Adharma is also same offense also. Like whatever we should not do, we should not do. We are doing with uh, anybody or any person. That is offense uh, according to Vedic Shastra. Like, uh, for example, when that uh, offerings uh, any uh, animals to God, that is also offense because um, God does not uh, accept that offering uh, as a as uh, that is not sacrifice like uh, uh, when uh, ancient uh, Satta Yuga there is a, a Jagga and they uh, offer all uh, animals as uh, to um, to uh, elevate their spiritual life or they can get another human life but um, some people uh, they are uh, pretending that we are offering that uh, animals to God, not uh, not because of the sacrifice. They are uh, pretending as a dharma, but they are using uh, for their own self gratification. That is called offense. So, and um, in regular life, like anything, disrespect or uh, whatever bothering to somebody, we should not do that one. So any bothering uh, or uh, that is also called defense. That's my opinion. I'm not. Oh, sure. that's very nice. Thank you for joining and expressing. Mother Danda Kesh, you are senior most here, senior disciple of Prabhupada, scientist from French. Would you give us one, two word? What is offense? Why we are afraid of offense? Well, I'm just listening. Okay. Uh, let's see. Mother Brajarani Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna. Um, I would say it's something we behave very um, in a bad way with 
someone and hurt them not being merciful um, very uncompassionate uh, something like that that's good that's very good thank you Hare Krishna anyone else Thakur I'm not sure who great personality you are would you like to say something about Aparad. Mother Amrita, I know you are at your in your house, in your room. Would you like to say what is Aparad to you? Hare Krishna. Yeah, simply Aparad is anything that, at least my understanding, is anything that obstructs the flow of devotional service. That's good. And Bondage, you mean? Blockage. Yes, blockage. Okay. That's good. Thank you. Mother Sushilpa Devi. Hare Krishna Vidhanu Pranam. Uh, it, it, it stuck to my mind that all good but I just want to add anything that I takes me away of Krishna. Uh, I do, which I make others away from Krishna. Uh, we are from his word, I feel from you. Please correct me. You are breaking up, so I could not hear. Did anybody here heard it clearly? She said it's like uh, anything that pushes. I'll type in. Are you driving or you are sitting? You can. And no problem. I'm uh, here. Work. Okay. What did you hear? Pushes someone else away. Oh, anything that pushes someone away from Krishna is aparad. That's nice. Thank I you. make the pull out of Krishna consciousness knowingly or unknowingly. That's what it. Okay. That's very nice. Anyone else would like to? Otherwise, we'll begin. If you like, you can always raise hand uh, uh, in the computer or in your system. This morning, we discussed that um, our relationship with Krishna is eternal. So Krishna sent his representative. For what purpose? That relationship is broken. Have you ever seen a, a practical example I saw? I will not say the name. That husband and wife in one room, five feet distance or 10 feet distance, they talk each other at some point in their life as if the other person is thousand feet far. I told you. So I asked that person, you are speaking like she is like 2,000 feet or 3,000 feet you're trying to reach. Gobind, don't ask me. I'm just tired. So I, I, I had a nice talk with him. When you have a relationship with someone, you speak very gently. When you don't have a relation, your relationship is disturbed or broken or how do you say, uh, shaky, whatever. And then you really speak so harshly that as if that person has, is like a one mile far away, you're trying to yell. No, it's not yelling. You know why? Because the relationship is broken. So it's an interesting. If you look at from every angle, with Krishna, we are we have a relationship, but the relationship is broken. Whose fault? Not Krishna's fault. It's our own misuse of free will. And if you ever think it's Krishna's fault, you are still going to loiter in this world. Just be very careful. And not that we are trying to artificially blame ourselves. We did misuse our free will. 
period. And I have a reference if you want. I don't want to go to that route. We did a lot of research on that. So when we came in contact with the illusory energy, because of our choice, got attraction by the allure activities, then something imposed on us. This is third canto, 20 chapter, <clears throat> Lord Brahmaji's creation. The first creation of Brahmaji was what? What is the first creation of Brahmaji in this world? No. Five layer of ignorance. This is our first covering. The soul didn't have anything. Just the cover. Five layer of ignorance. And Prabhupada is very kind. He says Brahmaji did not like it. He felt like a scary. His soul will never get out of this material nature. This covering is like so thick. It's like a lenses. You completely see the world for you, for you to enjoy. You see enemy, you see competition. All this like through this five layer. Then he went meditation again. Then he got four <clears throat> uh, beautiful philosophy came. Sankha, Yoga, Tapo, Viragya. And then this four to counter this five. That means you have to do some austerity. You have to connect with the Lord in order to get out of this covering. And then came the four Kumaras to execute that. To, do, to, to serve these four principles, you need the four enunciator or preacher. So then came Shiva and the list goes on. So Anartha, the beginning of our entrance in the material domain, where Anartha began. So I mentioned this Anartha chart in your WhatsApp group. I hope you can memorize this. Anartha, one of the Anartha is this Aparad. So there are four Anarthas. Sharup Brahm, then Asatrishna, Aparad, and Ridai Durballam. 1520 Bhagavad Gita, you can go and you can see there's the two types of weakness of the heart. Prabhupada writes uh, uh, that uh, so this four, the first part, Sarup Brahm, has also another part. What is it? You don't know who you are. You think you are a girl. You think you are a boy. He thinks he's a son of a parents. We all have a material identity and we really meditate on it. We identify. We feel good about it. Besides, how many devotees? Very rare. Not even one person in the world. So most of the people are constantly hovering on this idea of Anatta. So first, first mistake is Sharup Brahm. You lost your identity. You, uh, Deha, Deha Atma Buddhi. Deha Atma Buddhi is the first. Second, Paratatta Brahm. You do not know that you have a relationship with God and you are eternal and you are a servitorship. Third is Saddha Sadhan Tattva Brahm. How to get out of the material problem to spiritual realm, you do not know. Fourth is, you do not know who is causing all this problem, Maya Tattva Brahm. So this, yes. I did, you are in the WhatsApp group. Yeah, I did post. Saturday. It's, it's, in the, I guess, can you, the Krishna yeah, can you repost whenever I you... can, but it's only part of the chart. Oh, really? Because yeah. it's only one inch and it's not. But I see these four things that you listed and then, uh, the five that's up wrong. I can't see anything like that with a square or anything. Okay, there. I'll try to send, resend it. And then you have a Asat Trishna. Asat Trishna means you are hankering for this material enjoyment. What do you uh, what are you hankering for? Just comfort, eating, sleeping, mating, defending, the Atma Buddhi. Nothing to do with the Atma, but just this Deha, bodily needs. Bodily needs, these four things. And then you have a desire 
to actually enjoy in heaven. To be honestly, yes. Devotee means you are trying to get out of this. But majority of this world, all this religion, the purpose is even, I mean, I won't say this, Muslim, Christian, they all have a one idea that after this life, they will go to heaven and they will enjoy. This is the whole idea. This is another on earth. It's nothing really soul spirituality. And then third one is that you want some power to manipulate, subdue others, or make your superiority or display. It's there within the heart of majority people in this world. It is not just Hitler and Napoleon and few. No, it's there in every soul. Uh, conditioned soul, not every soul. Conditioned soul. And also, uh, fi finally, when you are tired of everything, you just want to disappear. This is another form of impersonalism. You literally want to disappear from everyone. They do. I mean, extremely, you can say they kill themselves or they disappear literally or they get divorced or they, like some or other is there. It's a contamination. And what is the third category? Third category is the operat. So there are four types of operat. First operat is, you have a, would anybody like to guess what is the first operat? Mother Krishna Manju, you are ready to give the answer? So, on um, lost uh, our own identity, and uh, that's called Shadu Brahma, and it has uh, four categories. Oh, one uh, one is lost identification, own identification. No, that's Second. true. My question was, I'm sorry, I could not phrase it probably. My question is, what is the first offense every soul in this material world did? The first offense they did. Anartha. Uh, no, before, uh, yeah, it is Anartha, but what is the first? Oh, Brahma, creator. Five layers of uh, ignorance. Before that. Before that. Mm -hmm. Before it was. Very good. Uh, oh, uh, relationship there's a, there's between... a bright devotee here. She just said. She answered it. Because we and... are eternal servant. Not to yeah. serve. Develop the desire not to serve. Is the first offense. As the root cause of all offense. We should remember. And, uh, Thank you for thinking that. And forget Krishna. Not serving is the root cause because we are servant not to serve him is the first and foremost cause of all offense okay then comes all the offense slowly slowly so second offense came envy in case if you don't know what is envy <laughs> so first is not to serve him then automatically. Where this idea comes from? Because in the beginning, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur writes that even for a moment, apathy, can you all say it a little louder so you can remember? Apathy to devotional service <laughs> is the root cause of impersonalism that affected our consciousness so hard that actually you feel, ex or you experience like loneliness. Do you know loneliness? Anybody understand loneliness? Maybe you don't, because you all are joyful Hare Krishnas. Loneliness, the majority people in this world, they feel loneliness, but they don't know. They think it is normal. So, Loneliness first reaction is they make you bored. So what do you want to do? You immediately try to text somebody. Anybody text me? Nobody texts me. Let's watch a movie. Let's talk someone. Why? Why do you need to do anything? Because you are bored. B-O-R-E-D. In case if you don't know what is boring. Where this bored, uh, boring idea comes from? Loneliness. Where the loneliness comes from? Impersonalism. Where the impersonalism comes from? 
And then where that's come from? Apathy to serve Krishna. Apathy to serve Krishna. That's why in Krishna consciousness, the first thing is you accept a subordination, guru or some mentor or Prabhupada, somebody. And then you try to serve. Always remember, service is number one qualification the soul needs. Because that's what we are made. Service is not a, a, a low position. Service is the highest position. Other day I did show you who has the Chaitanya Charitamrita. You should memorize that verse. That even God wants to become servant. Six Adilila chapter six, text one one one. Avatar gone bhakta bhav odikar Krishna Krishna. Avatar gone bhakta bhav odikar bhakta bhav hoite adik sukunahiyar. Adilila chapter six. Text 111. If you look at it, even God does not enjoy with his all power as a God. The highest happiness is servant of God. You found it? Can somebody read it? Microphone. Go ahead. All the incarnations are entitled to the actions of goodness. There is no higher existence. So, if, if you read 17 verses there, I memorized those because these are like a confidential truth. No scripture talks like this. Even God doesn't enjoy the highest happiness of God. You know that all the gods manifestation, they all want to serve Krishna. And you wonder why? Why Balaram highest happiness to serve Krishna? Because that is the highest happiness. As a God, you just have a power. You know, everybody serve you. But the experience, relishment is in the service to Krishna. This is a very confidential. This world doesn't know. Beside us, nobody knows, actually, honestly. So this is very nice. So if we can just always meditate on it, I'm a servant, I want to serve, I want to serve, I want to serve, like always feel like want to serve. Serving Krishna means serving through the devotee. You can serve the devotees. You can serve Krishna's parikar, antaraj, representative. You will uplift yourself very quick, very quick. So this is very nice. Okay, so let's go back one more time. What did we discuss? The root cause of impersonalism is apathy to devotional service. And impersonalism caused loneliness. Loneliness caused boredom. Thank you. And that caused all the problems. People always want to go here, there. Can we go for vacation? Can we do this? Can we do this? People are not happy. Why you need vacation? What? You see, you're not happy. They're not happy. Prabhupada said one time, when you come to a point, like I feel sometimes, I can sit anywhere in the world and just chant my job I'm happy. This connection, inner connection is required. Yesterday we talked about 521. It's required. Most important. Bhagavad Gita 521. You can literally draw unlimited happiness right here. Are you in the land or where? It doesn't matter. You are in that consciousness with Krishna. You are completely happy. That is required. Okay. So another... Um, definition I want everybody to remember. This is I found from Chaitanya Bhagavan. But the word I'm I'm phrasing, I am um, translating my way of thing. You can say aparad. is a uttering or verbalizing your expression which is made consciously in your heart with enmity. Expressing or thinking or you are expressing when you say it. Now there is a gradation, you know, like something you think in mind is offense but is not as bad when it comes out. There are six types of opera. Anti nindati vaidesti, Vaishnavanam avinandati, Krude jati, 
if you say Vaishnava, I did this, I really did this. Well, I don't know if I did all, maybe. You, you don't like a person in the temple or in a community or something. I saw him in the mall. I did that and I really feel bad nowadays. But those days I, did, I felt good. I thought I was doing right. So I didn't like that person. I saw him in the mall. I immediately turned back out and just going around, going all the way unnecessary, another half mile to get out. I could have just gone, Hari Bol Prabhu, nice to see you. No, I don't want to say. I don't want to see. This is offense. There are six, six types of offense. This is very bad. I mean, this is related to our practical. Now, when I uplift my consciousness, I will have no enemy. Even if somebody don't disagree, we can agree to disagree. We don't have to, because everybody is individual. We have to respect everybody's individual perception. There's nothing wrong. Somebody is seeing the, according to their eligibility. Uttam Adhikari seeing Uttam uh, things. Maddam seeing Maddam. We cannot blend everybody in one. It is not possible. Is that clear? Nectar of instruction we read in text 5. Krishnati Jasugiri Tammana Shadir. Some people you respect with the mind. Some people with physical. Some people you associate. Shushrushaya Bhajana Bhiggam Ananda Manna Nindadi Shunyam. So Rupa Goswami Path gave the gradation. This is very important. I have a question. Yes, Prabhu. If somebody offends me, how should I react? That person may not be even aware that they offended you. He speaks, you know, harshly and expects, as you say, why would I have a condition? Should I kind of uh, withdraw from him or how should I react? That's a very nice question, Prabhu. I mean, this is, I'm sure it probably everybody can relate that. What I do, I can tell you. I generally, nowadays, I pray for that person. Because I'm not here to correct. That person has a guru and Krishna, they will correct them when he's required. I should pray for him. If I cannot pray for him, that means I am holding something grudge. And that is bad. So when I I'm not holding anything against that person, I can pray. Definitely I can pray. And that works out. And Krishna will arrange that facility. Thank you for such a wonderful question. So Chaitanya, uh, sorry, Paridam Chintamani. Paridam Chintamani Bhaktivinoda Thakur um, says there is an internal unknowing offense and inadvertent offenses. He gives three. So one is internal. What is internal offense? He says negative, unfavorable thoughts. Neither expresses nor acted upon. Even though they don't yield any reaction, but it is beginning of bigger things. Scary, isn't it? Second, unknown offenses. What is unknown offenses? Offensive acts which manifest without one intending to. We are oblivious to the way you behave or respond or your body language. Inadvertent offenses. Sometimes we act in a way that offends someone. Now, to be honestly, I find it's not difficult like if if I did not have any intention to offend anybody, but somebody may feel, oh my God, he knows me, he didn't even say Hari Bo. I can't believe this. How could he do this? Somebody actually told me very close. Didn't he come and stay in your house? I said, yeah. And he didn't say Hari Bo to me. I said, what do you want to do? Well, I don't feel good about it. He said, you want me to talk to him? No, 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 no. So what do you want to do? You want to hold against him? Well, he should say, I say, I don't know what he can say. Is it? This is between him and Krishna. I'm only, I know what I can think, what I have capacity. What he's going or she's going, I can't say that. You know, we're not here controller, to be honest, is it? We are not controller of others. So, anyhow, this happens. I don't know what happened after that. So I'm going to say what Ramanuja Acharya said 
the 12 types of Vaishnav Aparat, we should be aware. When we are aware, we will discipline ourselves to get out of 12 types. First time, first type is Janma Nirupan. This is from Sri Sampradaya Vaishnava, Ramana Jacharya from South. I'm not sharing anything. I'm waiting. Mahatma Prabhu is going to show. I'm just giving a basic little and Mahatma Prabhu is going to give us nourishment. I'm just giving you bitter melon. He's going to give you the sweet rice. Hmm. So first, first offense, according to Ramana Acharya, he says, Janma Nirupan. To be honestly, Janma Nirupan, most of the devotees probably don't. I saw a lot of Western devotees, they don't, I don't think they commit. But I saw one devotee, he says, you know why Western fails? Because they eat beef before they come. He said, why are you coming up with this food? This is not uh, ever said in our scripture. People can purify any moment. Now I have to be honest, I mentioned this. When I asked this Mataji, she is a wife of a, a India Army General. Uh, they were visiting here. You probably heard that story. I mentioned this few times. I just wanted to see where it is. It's in Indian culture is like this. They, I mean, every culture is the same thing. They have some preconception of who is advanced, who is not. They are not Vaishnava. So she, is a, she came to our class. So I asked, Mother, if you just found out you need a Brahmana to help you to do some funeral, something, somebody died or something. Now, if somebody's last name is Mishra or some Brahmana last name, Chaturvedi, I don't know, it's all these Brahmana's last name probably. Now, but he eats chicken. But in order to do the ceremony, you have to wash his feet and drink. Sprinkle your head. Will you be able to do it? She said, yeah. I, if I need it, I'll do it. Now she's educated. Now her husband is the head, head of the military. Retired, but Indian military. General. Then I asked her, I said, what about the Western body? Who grow up as eating beef and everything. But now he's a Hare Krishna, very serious. He gave up everything and very rigidly serving. Can you wash his feet and drink some water? Prabhu, it will be difficult. I said, thank you for being honest. And I really took a note on that. But it will not happen to the devotee. But Indian, those who are not Hare Krishnas, they have this kind of attachment. Artificially, they think last name has something to do. That's why Prabhupada in his book, how much he say against it. Even this morning about Nityananda Bhamsa. People are like this. If you claim that you come from Lord Chaitanya's family, wow, she come from Lord Chaitanya's family. What's the big deal? Is she following Lord Chaitanya? No, then what's the big deal? Like they were making some time back our Prabhupada's granddaughter. She said, so what? I know the family, some. I used to go there. Uh, so what is the big deal? If they are Vaishnava, then we respect. If they are not Vaishnava, we respect from far. We don't associate. Just like anybody else. Prabhupada never said that. We have to go like this. You know, Bhakti Siddhan Chakar, Kedarnath Dattar, he has also family generation. Okay, we respect them, but not necessarily take a lesson and live our life like that. Because they may not be following Vaishnavism. So like that. We have to be very careful. It is there. So first thing is Janma Nirupan means do not see somebody's background where they come from. Literally, see that person's nature and attitude. His advancement depends on his activity right now, his nature. Not where he comes from, what he ate before he comes. That's not important. Second is Sharira Nirupan. Judging Vaishnava like If Hanumanji would come here with all these Sukriv and all these monkeys, somebody said, these are Hare Krishnas? Why are they monkeys? <laughs> so people would think like this, you know. 
If Bhushundi comes, you know Bhushundi? It's a crow body. Crow, crow. And if Bhushundi comes and says, wow, all the sannasis in Ishkan, everybody paying obeisance. Why? Because this is a Bhushundi. But this is a crow. No, <laughs> no, it's not a crow. He has a body of a crow. But he's a very advanced devotee. Can you imagine? Lord Ramchanda was one of the staunch followers. He loved Lord Ramchanda. He even entered in Lord Ramchanda's body. He was Lord Ramchanda. I'm sorry, I'm going off, but I have to tell you this little. Lord Ramchanda's mother, Oshola, she used to make pita. In this temple, they make pita. This, what do you call pancake? Something like this. So Lord Ramchanda, he was a little boy. And he was eating, but he was breaking the, you know, uh, uh, what do you call, roti or whatever. And he's eating and he's throwing sometimes some birds are coming. So in the meantime, Bhushundi, he had some literary issues. So he immediately <clears throat> went to um, find out. Brahmaji said, yes, yes, Supreme Absolute Truth has appeared in Dasarath's house. So then Bhushundi is like thinking, really, this boy is the Supreme God? Is that possible? Let me check it out. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's nothing wrong. I felt like I would probably do that. How can you say this boy is like Supreme Lord? So she, she, he comes. When Bhushundi comes nearby as a crow, so it's coming nearby. Then at one point, so Lord Ram is holding this pita, the bread, and taking some, eating some, throwing it to the bird. You'll see some child does this London. Then Bhushundi is thinking, come on, give it to me, give it to me. And but Lord Ram is not giving. Lord Ram is giving far distance other birds. But this bird is coming, but it's not giving, as if like ignoring. Like Prabhupada did, Prabhupada did to Giraj Maharaj and one another devotee who in his growing up, he was in Harvard at that time. So he grew up in a only child. In the in the bathroom, he writes. I am God. So he would every day he brush his teeth and he looks at it. Yeah, that's me. Huh? It's just a, you know, like somewhere hypnotizing himself. So when Prabhupada went to Harvard to give class, he was giving and he was like nearby, he's nearby trying to get, and Prabhupada like some or other, like avoiding him, talking to others. So he comes that side, Prabhupada going this way. <laughs> so at one point he really comes in front of Prabhupada and and Prabhupada said, you are not God. I was so scared. Why would you say to a student, you know, Western body, that, that you are not God? I mean, it's not even part of discussion. He didn't even say anything. So he got so scared, he went back. And then he went to the, his house and he looked at in the bathroom, that writing, I am God. And today he said, I'm not God. How did he know? So next day, his father had a, at that time, Rolls Royce, you know, rich family. So he took his father's car and went to see where Prabhupada was. And then he, that's how he came to. It's very interesting how Prabhupada knew. And he told him that he's not God. So Lord Ramchandra was avoiding, but at one point, he's thinking, no, no, I have to get this. But so then he, what he did, Bhushundi went to Lord Ram's hand and grabbed the whole pita and ran away. And then he started crying. Lord Ram started crying. Mommy, I have no bread. <laughs> and then Bhushundi is thinking from the branch of a tree. That's not God. Cannot be God like this. Then he's thinking like, maybe, but still in a little doubt. So then went to the, again to Brahma Jesus. You say, this Dasarat Maharaj's son is God? He said, yes. Well, I have a doubt. He said, I don't have time to talk about it. You decide what you want. Actually, Brahmaji was trying to avoid it. So he goes to Lord Shiva. He said, excuse me, I just have a question. It's about Supreme Lord arrived here. Because Bhushundi is the king of all the crows. You know, every species has a leader. We think they don't have a leader. They have a leader. Like the birds. They have a leader who? Garura. Yeah, every, every species has a leader. So then uh, Shivji said, you came for finding out the source? Like he knows. 
He said, yes, say, whatever you decide, you decide. I have, I am peace. <laughs> and he's thinking like, nobody's helping, say, come back again. So he's paying attention. Sure enough, Lord Ram is still eating another bread his mother gave. And at that time, at one point, he's thinking, Brahmaji is not ready to talk. Shivji is not ready. There must be some truth about it. So it's like thinking, but how is possible unlimited universes in the stomach of this little child? And he's thinking, looking, looking nearby, all of a sudden, Lord, breathe in. The whole bush body went inside. And he traveled for million miles, million years. And then he thought about, where did I start? How did I come? All these universes, millions of mountains, ocean. So I want to go back. And then all of a sudden, Ram speed it out. That's how he came. Yes. Gororo has the same problem. Bhushundi removed his doubt. Because Gororo, among the bird, the, the crow is the lower species. You know, in Barnashram, we have a Sutra and Brahman. In the bird, also they have. The, the Gororo is like a Brahmana, high, high priest. And crow is like this. When uh, I'm sorry, I'm just going off. I don't know. It's like, I want to like squeeze it, finish it. So Gururo, when, when he heard this Lord, uh, no, Hanumanji come, uh, when you, you remember the past time when Ram and Lakshman got kidnapped, uh, not kidnapped, they were taken in the Patala where uh, the snake, they wrapped them, Ram and Lakshman, uh, by Mahira Abana. It was for Lila. So then Mahira Abana, <laughs> Hanumanji is genius. Okay, I won't go to Hanumanji's story. I'll just tell you. So what happened? He said to him, he said, we need, we need to remove all this snake. So somebody says, can you get the Guru? All the snakes are afraid of Guru. Just by hearing the name, they get scared. And if he's here and he's the Lord's servant, just go, Hanumanji, go and tell Guru. So he ran to Guru. Where is Guru right now? He's on one planet. What is Hanumanji? We should know. These are in Kim Purusha Barsha. So and he went there and he met. He said, Gururuji, Lord wants your help. Excuse me? I carry Lord for others' help. Lord doesn't need my help. Say, I don't have a time to logic and our philosophy. Lord needs help if he can come. So Gururu went a little bit. I don't know the word you say. So he went. <laughs> so he went also to Brahmaji. Is this possible that Lord appeared here? He said, yes. But how can Lord needs my help? He said, I don't know. Don't ask me all this question. You go and deal with, deal with the Hanumanji. So he went to the Shiva also because they are the authority. You know? And Shiva says, this is very mystery. I thought you will come, but I don't have the answer. You figure it out. <laughs> so he comes back. And he goes all the way to the Patala Loka. Just by seeing the Guru, all the snake. Whew, because they're so afraid. But how is that they wrapped up in Ram and Lakshma? It's for Lila, it's a particular purpose. So like this, it's very difficult sometimes. But they don't commit offense, we have to understand. But this Lila, we, we can fall always in some illusion, some difficult. Even Guru felt difficult. Hanumanji felt difficult. But those actually intensify their love for the Lord. And they cry to the Lord. That's how the Leela goes on. They don't commit offense. But for us, if we misjudge, we don't take action on it. They do take action. They just don't stay, stay peaceful. You know, Guru didn't stay peaceful or Hanumanji. Okay, I won't do anything. No, no, they search out. They go to... Brahmaji, they go to Shivji. We can learn like this. When we have a doubt, we should go to senior devotee and talk that this is what I have a doubt about. This. Like this. Okay. This is called Sharira Nirupan. Third is, I'm going to go very quick. Bhava Nirupan. Bhava Nirupan means you think when a junior, so called, you think some junior did something, you have a right to chastise. This is not good. Now you may say, well, how is the temple will run? 
the temple authority is there, temple president is there, GBC is there, and uh, the, the every devotee's guru is there, mentor is there. You, you, we don't have to take the responsibility in our own hand. Fourth is ashram nirupan. Ashram nirupan means like sannasi. If sannasi thinks I am senior than you because you are grihastha or you are lower, this is offense. Because Bhaktivinoda Thakur whole life was grihastha, Narottam Das Thakur. They are all exalted soul. How can you think the grihastha? So we should not think like that. We should give the importance of their devotion. Fifth is Abhaya Nirupan. Abhaya Nirupan means Abhaya Nirupan means if you see something wrong with somebody, like uh, I remember one devotee got robbed, and the other devotee said, He's not a good devotee. That's why Krishna just took it. That's not a good way to look at it. When you hear some devotee accident happen or something happen, we should not underjudge like, oh, they are bad devotee. That's why. This is very dangerous. Is everybody understanding what I'm talking? Is it practically this is what happened? Then seven is Basho Nirupan. Basho Nirupan means only res respect when you go to Holy Dham, you don't even respect your god brother or sister in your own temple, but you go to Holy Dham, you see some Mahant or somebody, you pay big respect. You come back to temple, you don't respect like that. They are like family member, who cares? This is also offense because they are Vaishnava. We have to respect them. The eighth number is Bandhu Nirupan. That uh, not respecting to Vaishnava, family body, consider them ordinary. Okay, this is applicable especially for the those who have children and parents. I mean, we all have parents and children. If we think like, ah, I live with them, what is the big respecting about it? Be very careful. Because we don't consider them as like an important Vaishnava in our life. It's very interesting. The number nine is Prakash Nirupan. Prakash Nirupan means only respecting Guru and Acharya in the temple, not respecting other devotees. Then Prakara Nirupan. Prakara Nirupan means respecting those close to my Guru. You know, anybody is very close near to my Guru, I respect him. Somebody is not coming close to my guru, I don't care. I don't know if anybody will tell that way. I hope not. And that's this happening in the movement. Scary. Then 11 is Bartana Nirupan. Bartana Nirupan means if you say, what is this Prabhu does? Oh, he's a uh, trash collector. It's okay. It's not that important to me. It's like, I go off as if like a, as if his devotion is not even important. Just because he, he works for the city as a trash collector. You know those truck trash collector. You know what I mean? Sometimes we think like this. Who is he? Oh, he is like a vice chancellor. Are you both? <laughs> Why is that? Uh, who is he? Uh, he's a he's a uh, mailman. Oh, sorry. Think like that. This is very dangerous, isn't it? Like, I, I hope none of us do that. And the number 12 is Dosho Nirupan. Dosho Nirupan is sometime, like Brahma, uh, uh, anybody read Chaitanya Chaitamita, you saw Madhacharya, for Prabhupada right, purposely avoided Brahma Bhimohan Lila. He writes, you know, then Madhya Sampradaya, they never discuss Brahma Bhimohan Lila even though they are one of the founder in our parampara. Because they could not recognize, re reconcile how Brahmaji being the founder of Sampradaya could do mistake like that. So the, he never, Prabhupada writes, he voluntarily choose not to give any comment on that chapter. So like this, you hear it, but how do you digest? Oh, Madhacharya is not. Madhacharya said another thing. Uh, about the gopis, he said they are transcendental prostitute. Now, I don't know what is that means, you understand. But be careful. Madhacharya is also very elevated soul. We should not underestimate his comment. Can you, re can you respect, can you maintain respect at the same time you grow spiritually and not be judgmental? It is required constant hearing and understanding. Then you may say like, my God, 
so many things to know Hare Krishna because you know you have to take medicine in the morning noon and dinner again in the morning oh I'm tired no you better take the medicine you want to get cured you have to take the medicine it's just an adjustment we just and once you will become pure automatically this will happen <coughs> not commit offense. Okay. I think we went a lot. That's enough. Now we are going to look forward for Mahatma Prabhu to give us nectar. Go for it, Prabhu. Did I make you... Okay, you are co-host. Your co-host, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. My, 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 my computer is <laughs> Chromebook. So I still need to... It's not allowing me to do uh, uh, share. Uh, you may be the co-host, not him. I made him co-host. You may be co-host, not him. Oh, you. <laughs> oh, you did on the side. Oh. You are co-host too. Yeah, you have to make Oh, Krishna. Okay, bro. Now you are Hare Krishna. Thanks. Thanks. Us. You can hear. Mother Dandakesh, can you hear us? Or Mother Brajarani, anyone can hear us? Yes, I can hear. Yes. Okay, they can hear. Very good. Thank you. I cannot hear whatever he says. Oh, I'm just. Uh, I'm just uh, yeah, actually, now I can I cannot hear either. I heard you talking, but not. You cannot hear Prabhuji, we, we can hear only you, Prabhuji. Nobody else. Okay. That's Prabhu. true. Can you do hear opening of this one? Purnachan Prabhu, mic. Mic. He has mic. And if I want to just open this. Uh, oh, you can uh, mute it. Yeah. I can mute. Okay. Uh, Oh, okay, okay. Now, okay. Now, 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 now,
Okay. Now it's okay. <laughs> okay. So, Atha, where is my? Yes. Yeah. 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 So now everyone can hear. So I, uh, well, how I want to do is there are around uh, 71 um, <clears throat> offenses are there. So we want to share, everyone should share at least few, um, five, six, uh, read it from the one I already posted in uh, our WhatsApp group. And you can pull it up or you can read from there also. But does you have any question? Okay. So this is the one what I, what I have here. <clears throat> so oh, can it can it yeah, go ahead, Matas, you're smart. Yeah. <laughs> because it's hard, like it's uh, hard to read from. So Chromebook, I should not use this one. Bahu Janma Karyadi Sravana Kirtana Tabutana Paya Krishna Pade Premadana. If one is infested with the ten offenses in the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, despite his endeavor to chant the holy name for many birds, he will not get the love of God. That is the ultimate goal of this. Is usually, this one is the one which I'm uh, showing in the screen. This is from the uh, eighth chapter from the uh, nectar of devotion. So, first of all, what it says here um, in the bottom part is uh, all the way to the bottom, there is uh, 10 offenses that will be, uh, and I would like to suggest. Maybe probably can start from the beginning, just to start, so that if you have any explanation, you can explain also. Pran Pran Govinda Prabhu. First offense is one should not enter the temple of the deity in a car or fellow queen or with shoes on their feet. We should go around that way, easy, right? Yeah. You said go around like this. Okay, okay Anna, you can do. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, then, yeah. Oh, thank you. Exercise. <laughs> you want me to read like four or five of them or just one? Or? Yeah, that will be great. Yeah. Uh, like a five, five. Yeah. Or five. five. Uh, one should not fail to observe the various festivals for the pleasure of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is John Mastami in Rathyatra. One should not avoid bowing down before the deity. One should not enter the temple to worship the Lord without having washed one's hands and feet after eating. One should not enter the temple in a contaminated state. According to Vedic scripture, if someone dies in the family, the whole family be contaminated for some time, according to its status. For example, if the family is Brahman, their contamination period is 12 days, 30 days. One should not bow down on one hand. Can we ask the question in between? Uh, yeah. Thank you, Prabhu. Prana Govinda Prabhu. Can we ask a question in between? I, yeah, if you can, I'd say it's okay. You can so ask. About this um, contaminated time after uh, you know, the, there is a demise in the family. So, um, because this question comes many times. In our Sangha and other, like what should we follow? Here it says about as for the Varna, there's Brahmana, then 12, 12 days, 
that three years why she has so as a follower of his khan we use this sudra khadi ji yeah sudra and vaisya right oh the pen was shipped 50 oh yeah sudra khadi ji so in combination many times that discussion happens that something happened like that in india some relative is no more now so what should we call it as far as home temple and going to temple would you like to try i'll give my for you are the my <clears throat> so my answer is uh, for the devotees vaisnavas they don't have that much uh, restriction because we cannot let the lord fast or to stop the service so we don't stop so that's the my answer i got i heard from the other uh, devotees uh, you have what shastra says is what we want as a bhakti shastri student we want to know what shastra says we have heard multiple answers like for example i i heard answer is you know our our mental state is not correct that time because if somebody is no more and we love them and then with that mental state that um, sadness serving is also not proper so we wanted to know from shastra I, what I understand, I can just tell you that when Adi Acharya, uh, his father passed away, and he did the funeral, and how he established, he was the head of the Brahman in the Sangha, and he established one wonderful uh, conclusion for a question. Another example is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he went to Goa. to give his father's uh, final right to the vishnu temple so after he did that as he was coming out he saw his guru there meeting his guru there uh, there ishwara puri and then he gave the conclusion he said when you offer oblation to vishnu's lotus feet then uh, your father only one soul get liberated but seeing the lotus feet of a pure devotee ishwara puri that my millions of forefather millions of soul will be departed so please allow me to serve so he gave a little feast he served the guru and observed so if you look at bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur's commentary on this he says when vaishnava that is the biggest part is three things the his, his body to be cremated very nicely so sunar is better sunar is better unless he is a very advanced vaishnava maybe a few days takes for samadhi and all but first and foremost thing is two things in that i can i can give you reference on this is that you create a beautiful vaishnava festival good chanting and then departed souls relative they come and discuss about the quality of that departed who departed that how that person was a great devotee or great uh, well wisher how he related to the vaishnava community and then you make a big feast over to the lord and serve the devotees and uh, departed souls family they should give some gift to the devotees hari naam krishna prasad krishna bhakta sangha is the best sadha than any other ritual and that's what we should do this is what in alacho we do and i always suggest and i have a quote which i'll put it on the whatsapp group so they can see this is beautiful that what we should do as a question now very nice question prabhu because a lot of devotees when somebody departs they get a little like concern what supposed to be done i hope that gives you some yes. yeah, how to how to uh, celebrate we got it but then um, not not here but when i was in new jersey there were some questions like that we used to come up more of that uh, what should they follow as far as going to temple is concerned and going to and doing uh, 
we are not following those strict rules it depends if they are not devotee then is one thing but if they are initiated they are under guidance of their guru then it does not go in this uh, satkriya sardipika or hari bhakti bilas sadya pranam we follow what is vaishnava standard then you do the funeral on 11th day you do a beautiful because generally vaishnava they are all initiated by a brahmana the iskon gurus they are all brahmanas so you are you got the achuta gutra so you don't follow any other varna sam system you just wait for 11 days and give a big party invite all the other vaishnavas and reveal them the departed souls vaishnava quality fit the uh, make a big fest feast for the lord and distribute the prasad now i did do sometime few things for an example if that soul had a accident because in alachua there is also one devotee was accident because untimely or accidentally death is a little different then in that case you do this at the same time you take a mahaprasadam plate and take it outside and uh, literally do little rituals i have it here and you just uh, see that the departed soul can grab an animal or something and eat this mahaprasadam will be delivered this is for i'm saying if something accidentally you know, somebody died or somebody killed someone untimely death otherwise you don't have to follow just like a sadha pranali of that because we have a guru Bhakti Charu Maharaj is Brahmana. He is Achyuta Gutra. Prabhupada is Achyuta Gutra. We don't go by the last name of the caste system. Achyuta Gutra. So we follow all these eleven days. That's it. Is that okay, Prabhu? Thank you. Six. One should not bow down on one hand. One should not circumambulate in front of Sri Krishna. The process of circumambulating relation should be performed outside the temple structure at least three times daily. One should not spread his legs before the deity. One should not sit before the deity holding ankles, elbows, or knees with one hand. One should not lie down before the deity of Krishna. Sorry. Eleven. One should not accept prasadam before the deity. Number twelve. One should never speak a lie before the deity. Number thirteen. One should not talk very loudly before the deity. Number fourteen. One should not talk with others before the deity. Fifteen. One should not cry or howl before the deity. One should not uh, quarrel or fight before. Before the deity, one should not chastise anyone before the deity. One should not be chast charitable to beggars before the deity. One should not speak very harshly to others before the deity. Number nineteen. One should not. Um, sorry, twenty. One should not wear a fur blanket before the deity. One should not what he mentions or praise any else, anyone else before the deity. One should not speak any ill names before the deity, and one should not pass a hand before the deity. And one should not fail to worship the deity according to one's means. In Bhagavad Gita, it is stated that the Lord is satisfied if some devotee offers him. Even a leaf or a little water. This formula prescribed by the Lord is universally applicable, even for the poorest of poorest men. But that does not mean that one who has sufficient means to worship the Lord very nicely should also adopt this method and try to satisfy the Lord simply by offering water and a leaf. If he has sufficient means, he should offer very nice decoration, nice flowers, and nice food stuff. And observe all ceremony. It is not that one should try to satisfy the Lord with a little water and a leaf, and for himself spend all his money in sense gratification. Yeah. 
25, one should not eat anything that is not offered first to Krishna. 26, one should not fail to offer fresh fruit and grain to Krishna according to the season. 27, after food has been cooked, no one should be offered any foodstuffs unless it is first offered to the deity. 28, one should not sit with his back towards the deity. 29, one should not offer obese, obeisances silent to the spiritual master. Or in other words, one should recite aloud the prayers to spiritual master while offering obeisances. 30, one should not fail to offer some praise in the presence of the spiritual master. 31, one should not praise himself before the spiritual master. 32, one should not deride the demigod before the deity. <laughs> This is a list of 32 offenses. Besides these, there are a number of offenses which are mentioned in the Varaha Purana. They are as follows. One, one should not touch the deity in the dark room. Two, one should not fail to strictly follow the rules and regulation in worshipping the deity. Three, one should not enter the temple of the deity without first making some sound. Four, one should not offer any food stuff to the deity which has been seen by dogs or other lower animals. Five, one should not break the silence while worshipping. Six. Number six. Number six. One should not uh, pass urine or uh, evacuate while engaged in worshiping. Oh, it should be definitely okay. One should not offer incense without offering some flour. We use flour without any fragrance should not be offered. One should not fail to wash his teeth every, uh, his teeth very very carefully every day. <laughs> one should not enter, enter the temple directly after sexual intercourse. Uh, one should not uh, enter the temple after touching a woman during her menstrual period. One should not enter the temple after touching a dead body. So one should not enter the temple wearing garments of red or blue color or garments which are unwashed. Oh. Interesting, eh? Okay, okay 14. One should not enter the temple after seeing a dead body. One should not pass air within the temple. One okay. should not be... Okay, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Are you wrong? Are you wrong? Okay. okay. One should not be angry within the temple. <laughs> 17. Don't be angry in the temple. Don't be angry. 17. 17. One should not enter the temple after visiting a crematorium. crematorium. 18. One should not belch before the deity. So until one has fully digested his food, he should not <laughs> enter the temple. 19. One should not smoke marijuana or ganja. 20. One should not take opium or similar intoxicants. 21. One should not enter the deity room or touch the body of the deity after having smeared oil over his body. 22. One should not show disrespect to a scripture teaching about the supremacy of the Lord. 23, one should not introduce any opposing scripture. 24, one should not chew betel before the deity. 25, one should not offer a flower which was kept in an unclean pot. 26, one should not worship the Lord while sitting on a bare floor. One must have a sitting place or a carpet. 27, one should not touch the deity before one has completed taking bath. 28, one should not decorate his forehead with a three-line tilak. 29, one should not enter the temple without washing his hands and feet. Other rules? Okay. okay. Nice. Other, rules, Other are... rules are that one should not offer a food stuff which is cooked by a non-Vaishnava. One should not worship the deity before a non-devotee. Non and one should not engage himself in a worship of the Lord while seeing a non-devotee. One should not begin the worship of a deity without first worshipping the demigod Ganapati. Who drives away all the impediments in execution of devotional service? One should. One should. One should not begin. Yeah, one should not begin the worship of deity. Yeah, you should worship Ganapati before worshiping deity. Yeah. That's what it says. No, no, but this, that's what it's printed here. One should not begin the worship of the deity without first worshiping the demigod.
Pat Karapati, who drives away all the impediments in the execution of devotional service. It's a negation, yeah. It just wanted differently, that's right. This volume it is. Probably there's a division difference or something. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it means the same anyway. In the Brahman Samhita, it is stated that the Ganpati worships the lotus feet of Lord Narsimhadev and in that way has become auspicious for the devotees in clearing out all the impediments. Therefore, one should, one should worship Ganpati before worshipping the deity. The deity should not be bathed in water which has been touched by the nails or fingers. When a, when a devotee is perspiring, he should not engage himself in worshipping the deity. Similarly, there are many other prohibitions. For example, one should not cross or step over the flowers offered to the deities, nor should one take and vow wow, um, in the name of God. These are all different kinds of offenses in the matter of executing devotional service, and one should be careful to avoid them. In the Padma Purana, it is stated that even a person whose life is completely sinful will be completely protected by the Lord if he simply surrenders unto him. So it is accepted that one who surrenders unto the Supreme Personality of God becomes free from all sinful reactions. And even when a person becomes an offender unto the Supreme Personality of God himself, he can still be delivered simply by taking shelter of the holy names of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare. Rama, 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 In other words, the chanting of Hare Krishna is beneficial for eradicating all sins. But if one becomes an offender to the holy names of the Lord, then he has no chance of this. The offenses against the chanting of the holy name are as follows. One, the blessing the devotees who dedicate their lives for propagation of the holy name of the Lord. Two, to consider the names of the demigods like Lord Shiva or Lord Brahma to be equal to or independent of the name of Lord Vishnu. Sometimes the atheistic class of men take it that any demigod is as good as the supreme personality of Godhead, Vishnu. But one who is a devotee knows that no demigod, however great he may be, is independently as good as the supreme personality of Godhead. Therefore, if someone thinks that he can chant Kali, Kali, or Durga, Durga, it is the same as Hare Krishna. That is the greatest offense. Three, to disobey the orders of the spiritual master. Four, to blaspheme the Vedic literature or literatures in pursuance of the Vedic version. Five, Oops. to consider the glories of chanting Hare Krishna to be imagination. Number six, to give some interpretation on the holy name of the Lord. Number seven, to commit sinful activities on the strength of, of the holy name, name of the Lord. Lord. It should not be taken that because by chanting the holy name of the Lord, one can be freed from all kinds of sinful reaction. One may continue to act sinful, sinfully, and after that chant Hare Krishna, then neutralize his sins. Such a dangerous mentality is very offensive and should be avoided. Eight, to consider the chanting of Hare Krishna one of the auspicious ritualistic activities offered in the Vedas as fruitive activities, karma kanda. Nine, to instruct a faithless person about the glories of the holy name. Anyone can take part in chanting the holy name of the Lord, but in the beginning, one should not be instructed about the transcendental potency of the Lord. Those who are too sinful cannot appreciate the transcendental glories of the Lord, and therefore it is better not to instruct them in this matter. And number 10, to not have complete faith in the chanting of the holy names and to maintain material attachments, even after understanding so many instructions on, the matter, on this matter. So every devotee who claims to be a Vaishnava must guard against these ten offenses in order to quickly achieve the desired success, which is Krishna Prem. I'm done with this. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Five minutes early. There's a series of some questions from the book, handbook. Some questions are there. No for the answer all the questions i some i guess some idea but i don't know is uh, okay. uh it's a fitable or not you can tell so me so let's discuss those questions you have it yeah okay
Okay, the question is, <clears throat> page number 26. So question is, these five seva abrad mentioned in chapter eight, which are particularly relevant to you. So you should give your own maybe, huh? They're relevant to you means for me, but everyone is diff uh, different. Yeah. Can you say some, some idea? Say for yourself. Seva abrad. Okay, what? several abroad. Uh, sometimes when we go to temple, inside the temple, they just go inside without any, um, like uh, we walk from all over the place and we don't wash our uh, feet and just get it inside. Uh, what happens when you get in, because we walk from so many places, so it is dirty. So when you, before the temple enter inside, Maybe we have some kind of a facility that we can wash it, then enter it. There's a hose right outside this. Yeah, yeah. Some, that also very nice. Uh, uh, that way uh, we don't have a commit uh, offense. Uh, I always go by the practical logic. Yes. If you are coming from your room, you didn't walk on the dirt. You have a shoes. You go to temple you take the shoes outside keep the shoes outside you're fine mm. because the whole purpose like in Hari Bhakti Bilash it says after using the toilet you wash your hand right, uh, uh, left hand 18 times seven uh, right hand 17 times and then really I was like trying to count it I was just <laughs> I do mistake like this so one time I was with Jabhatak Maharaj going to Nepal, very early days, and I could not, uh, I didn't, it was very freezing cold, and we were in the car, uh, van, the Mercedes van, and Javadar Maharaj was also taking us for a preaching tour. And he said, why you all are shaking, it's so cold, you don't have a warm cloth, he said, no. He said, put on oil, but he's a Kadashi, we don't put on oil. Javadar Maharaj says, no, 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 you have to give priority certain thing. You cannot just follow blindly. That uh, your preaching, your presence to Harinam is more important. Whether you're putting oil on your body, even the Hari Bhakti Vilas say, we don't disrespect. We have to see the priority, utility. So we put on oil, and since that time I was always thinking like this. Okay, he said like this. And then, we talked one time, and then he said, actually, Prabhupada is the best example of utility, is the principal. A lot of things we don't do according to scriptures, but when time, place, circumstances, the purpose of the scripture is what? What is the purpose of the, all these rules? To think of Krishna and never forget him. That's it. So for doing that, that's why all the rules and regulations made. You have to be very practical. You have to be very practical. The whole idea is to turn towards Krishna. Which way to turn towards Krishna? If we're feeling like, hey, Logan, you just join, you know, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to, if you didn't digest your food, don't come to temple. It's like, oh my God, before he leaves that uh, room, you know, he'll be like, did I digest my food? Did I digest? It'll be very difficult. Now, all these rules, we give the priority. So at the end, I'll tell you, you take four things, Ramanuja Acharya, I love Ramanuja Acharya, as far as far the DT uh, things, uh, I'm sure you all heard uh, Adilila 10th chapter, uh, Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta who says, we took over 110 things, um, I think it's AD or AD, I forgot, in the purport. Uh, Prabhupada writes that we took over 100 items from Ramana Sampradaya. It's for deity worship. So this is Seva. And if you look at Ramana Acharya did talk about it, but he also gave a other side. That even if you follow all this, the purpose is not just to follow. There is a purpose why and then how we follow. So then if you look at, if you focus on these four things, that will help us all. And I'm going to just say, if you can, I beg all of you, do this, try to do this, 
then you will, I mean, we should be careful about the offense. But we don't have to be fanatic about the offenses. Because then we will be going off track. So Ramanuja Acharya gave a, a very nice conclusion on uh, this. Uh, this is from uh, Krishna, Krishna. I'm just going to give that when you are a pujari, you come to temple and you are waiting the deity. First, you should think like this I'm not qualified to serve the Lord. So it's called Akinchanata. Uh, who are you? You are servant of your guru. Always think this this is first thing. Akinchanata means servant of guru. You all know the story of Vibhishan who came to see Lord Ramchandra. So Ramana Jacharya was about to leave this world and one of his great devotees, Nanodhara, asked Ramana Jacharya, you are about to leave this world, how would I feel secure? I'm not qualified. How will I go back home, back to God? So Ramana Jacharya says, you remember when Vibhishan came to see Lord Ram. Vibhishan surrendered to Lord Ram. But before Vibhishan came, this is in Treta Juga. You think right now you have a little issues in Ishkan? In Treta Juga they had issues. <laughs> Bigger issues than Looks like oh, there was Ishkan also there. <laughs> so Vibhishan came, Vibhishan came with the idea of surrendering. He already had a tough time, very tough time. That he tried to twist it this way, that way. But somehow or other he could not please his brother. He came to a point where he writes everywhere, Ram, 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 Ram. Ravana says, how dare you write my enemy's name? I'm going to kill you. You are my brother. I can't tolerate this. I would kill anybody. But because you are my brother, I'm asking you a question. So, of course, he come up with his own idea. He said, I didn't write your enemy's name. I wrote your name. He said, but it says Ram. He says, Ra means Ravana. Ma is Mandagari. You are your wife. <laughs> Very nice. You are my lovely brother. <laughs> but of course, he was trying you know, to survive in this family. But could not last too long. Finally, he said, that's it. I can't do it. I want to walk out. So when he heard what Ramchandra came with Lakshman, and they have a camping out, other side. So the war is about to begin. So then... Uh, Lord Ram and Lakshman, they are resting and everything is secure. You know, they have all these big, big money, monkey, Jambuban, Sugri, Angada, they are big, big powerful. They have millions of soldiers, monkey soldiers. So then uh, Bibhishan thought, this is it. Before the war, I'm going to surrender. I'm not going to fight. Otherwise, when I'm here, my brother may send me to fight against it. I'm not, I can take it. So he crossed in hiding way. And he had a poor servant because he's also powerful in long time. He's a Ravan's brother. When he came, as he came at the gate, the suspicion started. Immediately, message went to Dhamma. Watch out! Ravan's brother is here. As a, you know, it looks like he is a biomedia, but he could be a trap. So they asked Jambuban. Jambuban is a great devotee too. What should we do with Vibhishan? So don't trust him. Watch him. Watch him. Whatever the purpose he came, he should not go to Lord Ram right now. He should just watch and see how his activities. Maybe then Angada came in. Maybe he came to 
to find out our plan. He wants to know all the secret. So he's going to go back and tell his brother. In the name of devotee, in the name of surrender, he wants to spy. You know, spy can be the worst. Um, and so then goes back. Um, Bibishan is thinking. When I was thinking about it, just like one of us in his country. Like, I really came to surrender. I'm being judged. <laughs> they are being judgmental, sentimental about me. I really want to surrender to them. They really have a genuine desire. For well, that we know. But if I was in the monkey, maybe I would also doubt. You know, how would I know? You know what I mean? So I was thinking from both sides, it's correct. Jambuban, they are also great devotees. And they have a legitimate doubt. Then Sukhrib says, well, you know, he's a brother of our enemy, and he's just coming just before the war. We should not take it lightly. Just put him in a place where just guard him and his people, guard him and watch him. Just don't let him move and don't talk to him. And then we'll see. You know, when, later on when Lord Ram is ready. So it went by. So finally, the news came to Lord Ram that he's here to surrender. When Lord, uh, Lord Ram heard it, he was asking different leaders about their opinion. So there's a verses are there that beautifully explain. I'm not going to go there. But each person gave. Then finally Lord Ram asked Hanumanji. That was the clue. Because Hanumanji went there and Hanuman is very intimate of Lord Ram. Hanumanji, what do you think about Bhimisha? My Lord, I think he's a genuine devotee. Of course, you may say Lord Ram already in the heart of division, isn't it? He knows whether he's right or you know criminal or what they call midjapur means uh, hiding, disguising. So then, when I finally asked Lord uh, Hanumanji, says, as far as I understand, he is genuine. He genuinely wants to surrender to you. Then immediately Jambuban said, don't take it so quickly. Take it, Joy Sri says, Gornitai Bhagavan Ki Jai. Don't take it like so quick decision. He's the brother of our enemy. So then uh, finally came to a point, okay. Then at that time, some of the monkey leader, majority was not favor to allow Bhivishan to come. Then Lord Ramchandra stood up. Sakri Dabi Prapanna Ji. Sakri Dabi Prapanna Ji. Abhayam Sarvada Tasme Dadami Etad Bratam Mama. Abhayam Sarvada Tasme. Sakri Dabi Prapanna Ji. Even if somebody one time surrendered to me, Prapanna means professional open upon That even if somebody one time surrendered to me, I guarantee to give protection to that devotee. So Lord Ramchandra says, Who am I? I'm the supreme controller. You all forgot. I'm asking your all opinion. I do know what is in his heart and I know his intention, but still you all are devotee, I'm asking. But if somebody wants to surrender, should not underestimate. I will protect, give protection to that person. Bring division right now. So division came. So the point I'm going back now. So Ramanujacharya is about to leave this world, and Donuntar is asking, now you are leaving the world, what will happen to us? So that time he is giving that division was accepted by Lord Ram. And he went, he became a pure devotee. He's got protection from Lord Ram. But what about the four followers of division? What was their qualification? Would you like to guess? What was their qualification? Very good. You are intelligent. They didn't have any, they didn't do sadhana, they are not chanting Ram's name. They had a one qualification. Follow the Guru, Vibhishan. What are Vibhishan said there? And they got liberation, went back to the spiritual world because of Vibhishan. Because they are following Vibhishan. Even though they didn't have a qualification, but they are 
Well, I should not say they didn't have qualification because that's the main qualification to follow the order of his guru. So because that qualification is there, so we have to think like this. So four things I want everybody to remember. First is Sulabha. This is Ramana Jachare say. So Sulabha first. Third is Sushi. Next is Sushila. Third is Samita. And so so Sulabha. Uh, sorry, the fourth is Batsula. So Sulabha means we should think Krishna is not here, but I want to serve him. I want to serve under my Guru's guidance. So Lord has appeared from Golok Bindavan to here. Out of his compassionate nature, he has descended from Golok Bindavan to here. When you contemplate like this, before you go to DT room, even though there will be... Okay, I won't say it. But <laughs> one pojar even does mistake. Like he, he offered the incense, then by mistake he was offering the water. Then he realized, you know, he realized, oh no, oh, you put it back to water, you light the in, uh, light <laughs> lamp. So mistake will happen. I mean, this happened even here. Mistake will happen anywhere in the world because we are conditioned so. But if we have this poor mentality, then you will be saved from 60, 32 offense. And 36. How many is that? 60, whatever. 32 and 29. It's almost 70. Whatever. 68, 64. Offenses. There's a lot of offenses. And you have to remember it before you commit. <laughs> I mean, this will be like overwhelming. But I'm not saying that cheat the system. I'm saying that you can get out of effect of those offenses if you remember these four things. Very important. So, first thing is Sulabha. Sulabha means. Lord is not present in my life to give, but out of his own compassionate nature, he is descended down through my Guru Maharaj to give me the shelter, to allow me to serve him. This is what you have to think. Everybody understood this? First thing, you have to remember this, Sulabha. Then second is Sushila. Sushila means excellent disposition. Like what? That, my Lord, I'm not qualified. I have defects, four defects. Can you please accept our offering? I'm trying. I don't have a love for you, but my Guru Maharaj has love for you. And because you love you, my Guru Maharaj, under his guidance, I'm begging you to accept this. You follow? This mentality has to be there. So first one was what? Sulabha. Sulabha. Second is? Sushila. Uh, Sushila. Third is Swamitta. Swamitta means mastership. It's the quality of the Lord that gives the uh, pujari or every living entity confidence that the Lord will fulfill all his desires. My Lord, I'm here to serve you. And I'm, I have a lot of difficulties. This, that. Can you please? Overlook my offenses. Just acknowledge that you may commit offense and you may have a fault. And you do, we do have a fault. For it. So when you think like this, then automatically it will, uh, Lord will accept you on behalf of your group, accept your offense. And Batsula means tenderness. Tenderness that you have to remember that how Lord actually accepted, like Raghunandan's story, Raghunandan gave a logic. I don't know the mantra properly. I don't know how to chant properly. I don't know the offering. Do you need anything? No, you don't need anything, my Lord. But out of your compassionate nature, you love us. We are your part and parcel. You have come, appear in a form of deity. Please accept this offering. This humble attitude, these four things when you have, they're very interlinked. Then you will escape from the effect of offense. Well, First is Shulabha. Second is Sushila. Sushila. Swamita. Swamita. Like he is my maintainer. Swamitva. Swamitva. 
is my maintainer. Like, like, but you literally appeal, my Lord. Fourth one is Batsullah. Batsullah. Like affection. You you try to draw his affection. If you have these four quality, Bhakti Siddhanta Sosyadi Thakur established four Acharya in his temple in Chaitanya Math, Gorya Math. If you go to Mayapur, in Gorya Math, you will see that uh, four corners, there is a four uh, Acharya, Sampradaya Acharya speaking. And he gave all the speeches. That's why this is from. You can read lot. It's beautiful explanation. So it is ultimately attitude and our happening. It's good to reflect how de deplorable situation we are in. Like if Phil helps me when we go to temple and I help him, we ring the bell before we enter in the temple. So he feels a happy feeling. And Logan, you have to start also. When you come to temple, you make a little noise like, I'm here. You don't walk somebody's house. So temple is the his 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 place, Lord's place. So you may be like a Hare Krishna, I'm here, or ring a bell. They don't have a bell here, but you can knock the door. I'm here, Hare Ball, my Lord. <laughs> Something like this. Like you go to somebody's house, you generally knock the door, no? So like this, treat him as a person. The biggest uh, concern also, I always like, one time with Indra Dhamma Maharaj, we were talking, Maharaj says the first thing is that we should focus Krishna as a person. When we think of his, him as a person, then during your service to the Lord, you would not, when you do to a senior person, you are very careful, is it? We should not think like, well, Lord is not. He doesn't know everything, what I'm doing. You know, be careful. Means you're not thinking he's a person. He's a person. First thing, first thing, accept it that he's a person. He knows what's going on. So he will be able to deal with you if you are aware that he's a person and you are in a humble attitude looking for his protection and empowering you to serve him. Does that make sense? Very simple way. Okay. So, Prabhu, yes. Prabhu. Oh. Okay. So the um, first, the one which uh, we are talking about, uh, um, five thing we did not put yet, but uh, we can try to figure out. But second question is, uh, what are the consequences of becoming an offender to the holy names? Second question. A third one is how can no no what is the consequences of offending be becoming an offender to the holy names? Well, oh, you should know that. No, know. We are just uh, the what question I'm just reading. What is so, the result? You don't know? Are you not afraid of committing offense? You'll go away. You'll go away from the spiritual life. You'll, you'll deviate right. from uh, Bhakti path. You will not advance. So many fears should be there. Yes? Yeah. The sphere. Yeah. We should be afraid of uh, of us. Literally, we should, ne should never be fearless. On offensive. We should always be careful. Never make any devotee, you know what I mean? Have a good ending. Outside. Happy ending. From the outside. So, the, the, the third one is how can an, this is a kind of con, a confused question. <laughs> how can an offender, unto the end offender, unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, be delivered? I didn't understand what. It looks like this is the second question. How can an offender, unto the end offender, then again, unto the Supreme Personality of God had uh, be delivered? So, can, kind of question is... <laughs> uh, it's just a mistake. It's just, uh, how can an offender, unto the Supreme Personality of God, be delivered? Oh, I see. Yeah, maybe that. <laughs> well, how? It's simple. What do you 
What is the answer? Anybody can answer. Yes? Yeah. So you can do four things on this. If you really want to really apply this process online, first thing is you go to that person. If you go to that person, you have to say, not Pran Govinda Das, say, Vishwanath Chakuti Thakusei. I'm just repeating. You go to that person and beg apology and confess the truth. If you want to get out of the offense, don't take via media. So that's first. Second is, if it did not work, if that person did not forgive you, he just worked, I don't want to talk to you, just gone. Some or other, whatever, if possible, if ever happened. Then you try to do some service that devotee is attracted to. Every devotee is attracted to do some service. He may be cook in kitchen. So you go there in the kitchen and clean. Don't talk to the devotee, just do get his attention or her attention and you will see it will change their heart even if that doesn't work then you go to a senior devotee who is dear to that devotee not your likable devotee you go to the devotee who dear to him and you apologize and say i want to i committed an offense if you really proposed mother don't take bio media resolve your issue. You know, when Surabhi uh, took uh, uh, Indra to apologize to Krishna after all these offenses, so Surabhi says, okay, he just came out from the coward boys, he was playing, Krishna was playing, and he told the boys, I'll be back. So he went other side, now he's giving his audience, go. No, 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 no. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I, I can't go. Please take me. Please take me. Then Surabhi stopped to Indra. Do you really feel you committed offense? Do you really feel that you offended your Lord? Indra is looking like that. Yes. Do you really feel you have done something serious? Yes. Don't use me. If you feel that you want to be rectified, you go and plead. Don't take mentor or something. I brought you up to this, that's it. That's a good lesson I learned. If I really commit offense to you, I don't want to take him to talk to you, you know, like, why am I doing this? Because I'm not honest that I actually want to get out of this. I just want you to be like, nice to me. But actually I should just go and say, I'm really sorry, I did, I'm fool, please. So it was a good lesson. And if the, even if that doesn't work, Vishnu Chakuti Thakur says, then you take shelter of Holy Name. Just chant incessantly, eventually Holy Name will dedicate their offers. Four. What are the four? Mother Alwan. Take the microphone. Because you cannot make it up. A person and uh, beg pardon, seek apology. Yeah. And the second is uh, go to the if, if that doesn't if that didn't work, then go to the kitchen and help. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I give an example. If that person is working in kitchen, every devotee does some service somewhere. So go there and do something to get the attention from from him or her, whoever it could. Get the person attention. So I want to come. Yeah, and then you'll feel okay. That person, that person is really did a mistake. Now it's time to rectify. Then that person actually will soften. Yeah. Yeah. Even if that didn't work. If that didn't work, then talk to a senior. Who is favored to him, not who is who likes me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Senior to him. Then yes. Who can help? Yes. And if that didn't work, then change the. Krishna mantra and they will automatically But Vishnu Chakuti also said, don't jump to the Hare Krishna mantra. I don't care him. Hare Krishna. I'm going to chant and Hare Krishna. No. Isn't that kind of offense also? What? Isn't that kind of offense to say like simple as it is on saying to chant your mantra? I. 
Krishna. Isn't that be kind of like one of the offenses to commit sinful activities on the strength of entering the holy name of the Lord? No. Vishnu Chakrati Kao says that you take shelter of this previous okay. tree. Did not what? Then holy name. Okay, okay. Actually, there is a verse. Uh, there is a verse. Aparadhanama Jukta. This is the sixth canto. You have a better base. Krishna, Krishna. You have a better base. Then you will find it. In the better base, uh, six chapter Rajamil case, Nama Parada Jukta Nam. Uh, what is that Nama Parada Jukta Nam? Uh, if, you, if you have a better base, you can on six canto. Anybody has access? <clears throat> Nama Parada Jukta Nam. Nama Parada Jukta Nam. Uh, yes. What is that? Nama Parada Jukta Nam. Well, can you read the translation? <clears throat> yes. Abhisati prajuktani taniyeva kitani jala. Yes. Translation? This is a very powerful, actually. This sloka you should remember. What she said is correct. Otherwise, it will be offense. Even if one in the beginning one a chance where the Hare Krishna Mantra with offenses, one will become free from such offenses by chanting again in the Bhavanti Smartam Tam Aharnisham. One becomes free from all sinful reactions if one chants day and night following the recommendations of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It was Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who quoted the following words, Very good. Everybody understood? Yes. What she said is correct, Mother uh, Haley. What you said is correct. You should not just take advantage of the Holy Name and commit offense. But if those things didn't work, when you take shelter of Holy Name, and that verse actually says this, Avisanti Prajaptani. Avisanti means you have to keep on chanting, not just one time, Hare Krishna. So that's good. Anything else, Prabhu? Yeah. Therefore, it means that, uh, that should, it should be understood that one is easily relieved from all sinful reactions by chanting the Holy Name of the Lord and chanting of his qualities and activities. This is the only process recommended for relief from sinful reactions. Even if one chants the Holy Name of the Lord with him, proper pronunciation, he will achieve relief from material bondage if he chants without offenses. Ajamil, for example, was extremely sinful, but while dying, he merely chanted Holy Name. And although calling his son, he achieved complete liberation because he remembered the name of the Lord. Very good. Okay, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. That's it? Thank you. We're done? Yeah. All right. Gaur Prabhupada Hari Hari Bol. Thank you, Mahatma Prabhu, for a wonderful, wonderful presentation. Maam Partha Devim. Hare That's good. Are they